Hello everyone and welcome to Remote Biotech Club. In our last video, I went over the ingredients of PCR and two of those ingredients were primers and probe. And the, both the primers and the probe are short stretches of DNA that have a five prime and a three prime end. And so what I wanted to do with this video is to learn a little bit more about the strand direction of DNA. So let's dig in. Okay, so right here we have a very short stretch of double-stranded DNA. So I know this it's been a while since you guys covered this, so I wanted to just quickly review it. So right here, this blue here, this is the ribose. Um, this P, as you might have guessed, is the phosphate group. And then up here we have another ribose. Okay, and so the P's and the ribose, the phosphate and the ribose, make up the backbone. So right now the cursor is going over the backbone of this strand of DNA, and the opposite strand of DNA, here's the, the other backbone. Okay, and then in between here, the A's and the T's and the G's and the C's, these are the nitrogenous bases. And you might remember that the A's and the T's, the adenines and thymines, always pair. And the, the C's and the G's also, also pair. So the C is cytosine and the G is guanine. Okay, and so you can see up here, this ribose has numbers around it. Okay, there's a one prime, a two prime, a three prime, a four and a five prime. Okay, so those numbers are numbering the carbon atoms on the ribose molecule. So let's dig into that in a little more detail. So over here, we have a ribose right here, okay, and a phosphate group, okay, and so you can see there's a one prime, a two prime, three, four, and a five prime, okay. So what these are labeling, sorry about that, are the carbon atoms on the ribose. So here's the one prime carbon, the two prime carbon, three prime, four prime, and then five prime carbons on the ribose ring, okay. So the phosphates are always binding in between. They're binding to the five prime and the three prime OH groups that hang that are bound to the uh, the three prime and the five prime carbon. Okay, on the ribose ring, and this is where the strand direction is derived from. So you can see over here the phosphates are in between the the ribose groups. And the phosphate is always going to be binding to a, a three prime right here. And then the other phosphate up here is, is binding to the, the five prime. Okay. And so this is where the strand direction is derived from. It has to do with the way the carbon atoms are numbered on the ribose ring. Okay. And so this ribose here, there's, there's kind of a lot that's left off of here. Okay. They include the OH here. And there's an OH here, and they, this is kind of supposed to be heading towards another phosphate group. But if you want, we can dig into the structure of ribose for a few seconds here. So here we have deoxyribose and ribose. So deoxyribose is the sugar that's used in DNA. That's why it's called deoxyribonucleic acid. And so ribose is used in RNA. And the, the difference is this OH group right here. Okay, so this OH group is found in ribose, but it's only a hydrogen in deoxyribose. So that's why they call it deoxyribose, because it's missing an oxygen. Okay, so I just wanted to point this out to you that this more detailed diagram of ribose or deoxyribose in this case is that the other drawings leave out a lot of stuff. So you see all the OH groups here and all the H's. So the H is a hydrogen atom. The O, of course, is an oxygen atom. Okay, and so here's another hydrogen atom. And these lines here are bonds. Okay, these are shared electrons. Okay, so organic chemists are famous for abbreviating things. So they don't even include the carbon that's right here. Okay. They, they draw this one out, but they don't draw the others out. And so carbon, as it turns out, has four electrons that it can share. So it always 
forms four bonds. So this carbon right here has one, two, three, and then four bonds right here. And it's the same with this carbon. Here's one, two, three, and then four. Okay, so oxygen, as it turns out, only has two electrons that are available for bonding. So it only forms two bonds. So here's one and then two. And so this oxygen up here actually has two. Here's one. It's bound to this carbon. Okay, and then it's bound to this hydrogen. Okay, same with this one. It has two. There's one. It's bound to one thing, this hydrogen. And then right here, it's bound to this carbon. Okay, so we're really digging into the weeds here, but I figured, you know, maybe you guys are curious, and, you know, why not? You, there's gonna, there won't be any test on this, and so maybe it's kind of fun. Who knows? So let's go back here. So once again, let's go back a little further. Okay, so here we have our DNA, and up here at this end, we have the 5' prime end, and then the 3' prime end of this strand. Okay, right here. And so the other strand is oriented in the opposite direction. So here's the three prime end and then the five prime end. And you can see that orientation is derived from the ribose. So we have a five prime here and then the three prime end of the ribose is over here. Okay, closer. The three prime is closer to the three prime end of the whole strand, right? And over on this side, you can see it's, it's, you flip the whole thing over. So here's the five prime end and then the three prime end. Okay. And overall for the entire strand, you have the three prime end and the five prime end. So DNA is said to be anti-parallel. The two strands run in opposite directions. Okay. And so this is kind of a, a key point when we start talking about primers and the polymerase. Okay. Which we'll get to in, of course, an upcoming video. But I just wanted to go over one more thing before we get to that. And once again, we're gonna dig deep into the weeds, okay? This is, you know, nothing you're gonna run into probably for a few more years. But some of you might have noticed that like the, the cytosine only goes so far across, right? It's kind of short. Whereas the guanine goes way across. It reaches much further across. And the adenine, does the same thing as the guanine does. Basically, it reaches way across, whereas the thymine only goes a short distance across. Okay, and so th there's no, this isn't an accident, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so once again, here we have some DNA, and let's get oriented. Here's the ribose. There's our friend the ribose. Here's the one prime carbon, two prime, three prime, which is bound to a phosphate. Okay, here's four prime, and then this is the five prime, which again is bound to a phosphate. And so the length of this bond, um, they only make it longer so they can fit more stuff in, in between here, okay? So phosphate, ribose, phosphate, ribose. This is the backbone. And so here are the bases. These are the nitrogenous bases. So here's guanine. And so you might notice it has two rings, okay? One ring here, and then another ring here. Here's cytosine. It only has one ring. Thymine also only has one ring. Okay, adenine has two rings, here and then here. So let's remember this. Adenine and guanine have two rings. Okay, they're bigger molecules. Let's go back here. So adenine, it reaches further across, but it has two rings, as you recall. Same with guanine. It has two rings. So it really does reach further across to the other strand. Okay? So that's just kind of a minute point that I figured you might find interesting. So in our next video, I'm not sure what we're going to do. Maybe we'll talk about primers and the polymerase and synthesizing DNA. Or, as I mentioned in our first video, maybe we can talk about um, searching those primers against the human genome. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'll figure that out soon. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you're enjoying remote learning. I hope it's not too stressful. And I hope to see you soon in our next video.